Welcome everybody. Today is class number three in our electroculture series with Yannick Van Dorn. Today we're going to be addressing the issue of basalt and paramagnetism. Very exciting. Thanks for being here, Yannick. Thank you, Angela. Thank you for uh, to all to to be and, um, so today I will share you. Uh, uh, interesting knowledge about basalt and paramagnetism. Uh, that is a, a, a very interesting topic, how we can really improve uh, naturally uh, the fertility of the earth with, uh, with uh, natural products as basalt uh, that comes from uh, our volcanoes all over the world and that helps to uh, increase fertility. Um, also all over the world. So everybody knows uh, how fertile or the, the, the fields around the volcanoes. Well, well, one of the reason is paramagnetism that we will talk about this evening. Huh? So it's a very famous, uh, a, a very um, a big topic that I try to uh, uh, summarize. And I have also a book uh, uh, it's the first book about uh, that subject that will also come out in English uh, very soon. Huh? So it's already available in French and also in PDF in French on my site. And uh, it will be uh, in, in the next weeks, it will be uh, available in English. So let's start. Huh? <laughs> um, so we will talk a little bit about the history, scientific theory, working principles, hypothesis, uh, how and when to apply, and some uh, testimonials and results, uh, like uh, each presentation. <laughs> so the timeline of electroculture, well, uh, basalt is, is as old as our planet Earth. It's um, it's uh, from the volcanoes. So volcanoes we have already uh, uh, since the beginning of um, Earth formation. So it's very uh, old. Huh? Um, also, a lot of big civilizations were built around uh, um, uh, or agricultural civilizations were built around uh, rivers. Or, or or big rivers that uh, had their their um, their uh, uh, spring uh, mostly or or the erosion of the water and and the rocks was mostly in uh, volcanic regions like we have uh, the Nile in Egypt uh, that has his spring or, or his source uh, close to the Kilimanjaro and the volcanoes around the Kilimanjaro. And uh, we have also in France, uh, we have uh, the Loire with a lot of castles and a lot of uh, uh, agricultural fields around that are very fertile earth, that have very fertile earth that, ha that had their uh, spring or source in the mountains of, um, in, of in the middle of France, where you have also old volcanoes. So we, we will explain this. And uh, then in, in time, uh, the subject of basalt uh, was um, put in, in, uh, in our knowledge uh, with uh, research of, uh, of Phil Callahan and his books. And he developed a device, uh, the PCSM, uh, that that is able to measure the paramagnetism of the basalt. Uh, so we will uh, look uh, more in detail to it. And that is a, an interesting device for agricultural advisors uh, that uh, wants to, uh, to have detailed information about uh, the best basalt or the best uh, rocks uh, with the highest paramagnetic value uh, and how to help uh, the farmers and or, or our gardens uh, to increase fertility. And so you have a lot of companies that sells uh, basalt uh, in powder form or sand or, or 
little rocks or stones or gravel um, or materials from uh, volcanoes. It can also be lava or, or ashes or the ashes from the volcanoes that are also mostly very interesting in uh, agriculture. And uh, so in Europe, you find a lot of the basalt from a, a big company that is called the Lava Union from uh, Germany. But you have also uh, quarries uh, all over France, Italy, and all the, the countries where you have volcanoes, you have uh, quarries uh, that, uh, that mine uh, basalt and, and rocks from volcanoes. Eh? Um, in organic agriculture, it is more known and more used already since the 50s in France. I don't know the situation in, in Canada or US, but it's, it's something that is already known since uh, or, or, or widely used in, in organic agriculture. Uh, but mostly they don't know really the paramagnetic effects. They, they look at the basalt for the chemical properties or of certain uh, uh, elements uh, that are interesting for plant growth, but they don't look really at uh, energetic properties. And uh, what we uh, will look for or will look after in, elect in the electroculture point of view is uh, the energetic properties. Uh, yes, so we continue. Uh, Oh, sorry, sorry. Ah, yes, here. Yeah. Um, so basalt is mostly composed of two uh, big uh, product uh, elements. It's uh, silicium, so and uh, paramagnetic particles like uh, some iron oxides. Well, those two elements are really two. Um, uh, complementary elements uh, uh, that have uh, all different effects. Uh, silicium, like a quartz, for example, uh, that is composed of certain sand and certain powders, um, will resonate more with high frequencies, so more with, with uh, cosmic frequencies. And you will also have the piezoelectric effect with light or with uh, or or with or with pressure, uh, silicium will create uh, a kind of electricity in the soil. So, if silicium is, for example, on the top of the soil, then uh, it will create piezoelectricity with uh, under the influence of light, for example. But if it's uh, in a round tower, for example, or in the soil, it can also create electricity uh, because of the pressure uh, on it, of the soil above or the rocks above it. Um, and then you have also the paramagnetic particles, uh, the iron oxides, and those uh, will resonate more with the low frequencies low uh, electromagnetic frequencies that are some radio waves like the Schumann waves or Schumann resonance. So it's two different uh, frequencies. The, the one is more related to the cosmic frequencies coming from uh, the cosmos or from the sun like UV light or high frequencies. And the, the other, the paramagnetic particles will be antennas with uh, low frequency radio waves. So it's more related with the earth energy. Huh? It's really, you have the, the kind, uh, you, you have the, the cosmic energy and the earth. So you have two energies that come together in basalt. Huh? It's not only a silicium and it's also not only paramagnetic particles, it's the two together. And those two together is makes of basalt a really powerful um, uh, product or rock uh, that really combines those two energies. Uh, uh, and in electroculture, we also always, uh, in the point of view I have, uh, we, we always uh, look to um, to have a product or an antenna that is 
that will increase the cosmic energy and also the earth energy that it's in balance and brings harmony to. So uh, with basalt, it's, uh, it's very interesting that it will, with the paramagnetic effect, it will really also increase the earth energy. Uh, the, the volcano is really like a, a big mountain, uh, not always a mountain. Uh, in Hawaii, it's flat uh, volcanoes, uh, but uh, you have also mountains. But um, the most volcanoes are like mountains. They, they really connect the sky with the earth and the earth with the sky. Um, it's like a, a kind of cosmic antenna, earth antenna. Um, and with the paramagnetic effects, it will increase the magnetic field locally. Uh, 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 for example, and we all need the the uh, the magnet uh, the the natural magnetic field influences to be healthy. For example, in Japan, uh, I hear that you have like uh, they 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 um, explain the the sickness of uh, fibromyalgia. Uh, fibromyalgia, uh, when they have pain everywhere in the in the body, uh, they explain it as a magnetic deficiency syndrome. So it's it's not uh, about uh, other kind of, of viewpoints we have in in the, in the Western world. They, they speak about magnetic deficiency, and then when some people that have like pain everywhere go on. They advise them to go on um, uh, to walk on volcanoes that are very uh, high paramagnetic, and uh, and people uh, get like healed like by a miracle. But it's not a miracle; it's just uh, the, the the magnetic influence uh, that we all need and that can uh, be very uh, helpful for certain sicknesses or for healing or for for helping our body to gain again the, the energy it needs it's not only about earthing uh, earthing for example it's it's when you will recharge your your uh, electricity uh, your uh, electrons from from the earth well here it's really that you will recharge by the magnetism of the earth uh, so it's, it's different while well, plants also need that magnetism and, bas and basalt is a way to improve the magnetism locally uh, of the earth in our gardens and fields. So like we've seen, we have seen the, our planet earth is really a huge magnet um, uh, um, with a magnetic field of around half a gauss, but it's like a, 0.5 gauss but it can be at certain places 0.4 0.45 0.52 or 55 and uh, for example uh, an anecdote there is a room where i uh, i organize workshops and i always like to sit on a certain place and when i looked with a magnetometer uh, that measure precisely the, the magnetism uh, locally, well, um, where uh, the, the exact place where is the chair, the chair where I, I sit on, where I like to sit, it's uh, the exact place where the, param the, the magnetism is the highest. So it's really interesting that unconsciously I was attracted by uh, the highest point of uh, magnetism. Well, uh, uh, some animals will be also uh, sensitive to that. Uh, also some plants, some plants will uh, love that, will grow a lot bigger on those places and other plants maybe not, but uh, most plants, most uh, uh, plants we grow in our gardens and fields uh, like that very much and need that. Um, and this can be measured really very precisely with uh, electromagnetic um, measurement devices uh, uh, that exist. So we will continue. Uh, uh, like we seen, the, 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 the magnetism of the Earth is not just a static magnetic field. It's, it will also carry uh, subtle frequencies. 
and also uh, the low uh, frequency radio waves of, of uh, the, the Schumann waves, for example. Huh? Um, so we continue. So that's to show uh, that image is to show the, the Schumann waves uh, resonance. So the, the Schumann wave is related to the size of the Earth. When you calculate the size uh, 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 with the Earth as a, as a sphere, as a ball, uh, um, and the size between uh, the, the length between the ionosphere and the, and the surface of the Earth, and some constants as the speed of light uh, for electromagnetic waves, well, then you can calculate, uh, in theory, the Schumann uh, waves. And uh, this was also measured uh, in science uh, with specific apparatus um, that confirms this. So it's also maybe a confirmation uh, for the some people that doubt maybe about this that our planet Earth is really a sphere, huh? probably. <laughs> if in, if we look at uh, at um, the research about Schumann waves, uh, it looks like this. Huh? That's uh, normal. Uh, well, you, we have also harmonics. It's not only uh, one uh, frequency and yeah, the Schumann waves. It has also harmonics like uh, fourteen point one hertz, twenty point three hertz, and you have also even more harmonics. Uh, it's not only one wave. It's also related to our brain activity. When we look at the Schumann waves and we look at the frequency spectrum of our brain activity, well, it's very similar. Um, and so uh, it's like uh, our brain wave activity uh, uh, will come in resonance with the Schumann waves. Uh, this has been seen uh, with a therapist uh, that are very sensitive or people that uh, do a lot of prayer or meditation that they have like more activity exactly at the Schumann wave. So that's very in interesting. Um, so uh, maybe it's just a hypothesis, but when we will uh, put more basalt and more round towers uh, in our gardens, um, it will also help us to stay in tune with the earth uh, resonance and with the earth magnetic uh, frequencies, uh, electromagnetic frequencies, uh, uh, because it will also be amplified uh, locally. And this will help us to stay uh, uh, relaxed, to stay healthy, to stay, um, uh, to have a lot of intuition and, and creativity. Um, this has been seen uh, also with children and, and, uh, and um, yes, um, a lot of testimonials uh, also like this uh, around me. Uh, so, um, yeah, let me continue. <laughs> so the books that are speaking, the first about paramagnetism are the books of Phil Callahan in the 70s, 80s, 90s, you have the book Paramagnetism, Rediscovering Nature's Secret Force of Growth. You have also the book Ancient Mysteries, Modern Visions. And then you have a more recent book uh, that is more really about the signs uh, of, of uh, how rocks can help to improve uh, soil fertility. Uh, a very interesting book. Uh, for for the people that want to go more in depth in the in the scientific um, approach, uh, you have the book Geotherapy: Innovative Methods of Soil Fertility Restoration and Carbon Sequestration and Reversing CO2. Um, uh, yes, I, I cannot read <laughs> with the light, but a CO2 increase. Well. Uh, it's interesting that they speak about carbon sequestration because when we will uh, uh, add basalt to our soils, one of the first uh, effects we see is that it will increase a lot of life in the soil. So uh, the, the microbiology, also the earthworm activity. So it's like it will 
when we say that when we observe that it increases life in the soil, it's also more life, it's more carbon in the soil. Uh, so uh, the, the more we have life in the soil, the more we will have uh, carbon in the soil. If the soil is dead with no life, then there is no carbon. Uh, what can be, it can be maybe be charcoal, uh, that uh, charcoal, uh, that's also carbon, but uh, not uh, living uh, carbon in a certain way. Yeah? So everything we can do to improve life in the soil will increase uh, the carbon in the soil. Yeah? So in my eyes, the CO2 is not a problem in our world, but politics find it a problem uh, so uh, we can help them <laughs> also with basalt uh, to increase life in the soil and uh, also uh, um, uh, fix uh, carbon in the soil so so we are all happy <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, the books of phil callahan or or not so scientific. Eh? The, he he writes like he thinks, like he he share his belief, he share his his uh, his hypothesis. Uh, but there are very interesting books uh, um, uh, for for the one that really wants to know uh, about, and uh, and it can bring us further than only the scientific aspects. Uh, it's it's really uh, his. His vision is really between uh, spirituality and science, and and he was also a, a great a scientific. Huh? He 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 did a lot of science articles, also, uh, but uh, that you will not find much in the books. In his books, it's like a, a summary of his uh, findings and inventions and discoveries, huh? and and you. Uh, um, uh, ideas about all this. So the second book, like you see, he 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 put the subtitle "The Magnetic Life of Agriculture." So it's really uh, yes, it's it's a very good summary. It's really the magnetic life of agriculture that was not uh, looked to to it and not seen uh, until his uh, visions, uh, his uh, approach. You have also other books like uh, Bread from Stones from uh, Julius Hensel, very interesting, and also the book uh, uh, La Vie Secrète du Sol, or in English, The Secrets of the Soil, that is really uh, a must. Huh? It's, it's really a book uh, you, you, you need to read, uh, where they speak a lot about um, uh, rock, uh, the influence of rock power, powders on soil, soil fertility, and also a whole chapter about uh, the round towers. And then you have the last book of Phil Callahan, where you see him uh, with a little statue of the Virgin Mary and uh, on, on the front. Uh, so that's uh, a few years before he died. And um, and in this statue, he filled it with basalt. <laughs> and you will understand why. And he explained how it's so powerful um, and how uh, uh, the study of paramagnetism and basalt uh, brought him like uh, closer to a certain spirituality, uh, uh, that he was carrying a little statue like this in his pocket of the Virgin Mary. Uh, so it's not by hazard, huh? but we will see that too. And then you have the other book, very, very interesting, uh, uh, that would uh, that that could be the subject of, of a whole presentation. There's too much information inside. It's The Magnetic Pulse of Life. And this book is about the geomagnetic effects on terrestrial life. It's really about, um, uh, about the science behind it. Huh? Uh, in the times of Phil Callahan, he was really a visionary because he didn't, uh, there, there, there was no so much scientific uh, research in that time in, in when he discovered all that. It was, he, he discovered all those effects in the 40s, 50s, and that book, uh, like The Magnetic Pulse of Life, it's just a very recent book of, of uh, in, the, in a few years ago. So it's it's really... 
uh, and and the most science about this is also very recent huh? so uh, he was really a visionary of uh, Phil Callahan for example this is an article uh, a science article uh, it's one of the many um, that really summarize very well the 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 importance of basalt too. Even if they don't speak about basalt in that article, but they speak about the effect of the magnetic field of the earth, the geomagnetic field of the earth on, on plant growth and on living organisms. And they discovered uh, what comes out of, of, of that study is that uh, most times when they increased uh, slightly the magnetic the natural magnetic field of the earth well the most uh, most plants will grow a lot better the germination of the seeds also increases uh, and the health of the seeds and the root uh, growth so the plants will grow better above the soil but also under the soil more root growth is also more carbon sequestration in the soil and also more life in the soil so very interesting uh, so that's a very recent article from 2014 uh, for september 2014 but that's really one of the many yeah? so when people would ask is there science behind it well you have really a lot of science uh, behind it that can help you so that's some uh, uh, summary of, of certain articles like when there was less magnetic field uh, well then uh, you see for example delayed flowering uh, delayed uh, reproductive growth decrease in cell number uh, decrease in fresh weight uh, um, so in 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 most in most times it's um, a bad effect or or less uh, a, a reduction in growth uh, and when the 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 magnetic field is is little higher than the natural geomagnetic field then they see in most uh, articles a promotion of germination uh, and um, enhanced uh, photosynthesis, um, uh, increased root and leaf yield. So we 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 see mostly uh, good effects. Huh? So a promotion of germination again, increase in root length, surface area and volume. So in most cases, it's a good effect. But there are there are it's there are really many many it's like maybe more than 50 uh, scientific articles that speaks about all those things all that huh? so it's very interesting and basalt will really increase locally the magnetic field slightly but enough to have uh, sometimes really huge effects because it's really about slightly it's not when you take a magnet uh, you have like a thousand ghosts or five thousand ghosts uh, you have a, a very strong magnetic field but uh, that magnetic field will not uh, carry the earth magnetic field it will not increase the earth magnetic field it's it's different it's not uh, it's a magnetic field but it's not the same energy as the earth magnetic field when you take just a magnet uh, um, it's like you you need uh, water you can see you you can tell uh, you need a liquid but uh, not any liquid uh, uh, it's uh, it need to be water and water with energy uh, so it's not just about a liquid well here the magnetic field and the energy i would say it's not just a magnetic field uh, like we know in science it's really the earth energy of of the uh, the the and the and the subtle vibrations we find in the earth energies and and basalt is, is the natural uh, it's one of the natural uh, uh, sources that will increase that earth energy that is completely different with the use of a magnet uh, a simple magnet if you were, would put uh magnet powder in your soil is completely different than putting a basalt huh? um, you will not have uh, the same effects huh? I, I i want to precise that because uh, uh some that would not be 
uh, aware of, of the subtle energies, uh, maybe uh, will uh, uh, would have difficult to understand this, but uh, it's really about the subtle energies uh, uh, that will be uh, received by the antenna effect of the basalt. In, in the previous article we talked about, uh, they also um, share the hypothesis or the idea that uh, or what they observed is that the magnetic field influences directly the photo, photosynthesis activity. So that's very interesting. So the energy of the plants don't come only from uh, the light, the photosynthesis, but the photosynthesis itself, the efficiency of the photosynthesis is influenced directly by the magnetic field of the earth. So if you have uh, a bad or bad frequencies or 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 less magnetic field of the earth well it will uh, it will directly reduce or or um, or deteriorate the photosynthesis activity uh, so that's very interesting uh, uh, to be to be aware of so and that's also explained in those uh, science articles. So it's very uh, in-depth research. Uh, of the origins of basalt. From where comes basalt? Uh, uh, sometimes when you look at documentaries on TV, uh, uh, they mix lava and basalt. Uh, but a lava is a completely other rock than basalt. Uh, uh, two rocks that comes from volcanoes but the the basalt is uh, the rock that when you have the magma inside the volcano and uh, it becomes solid well then it's uh, called basalt so it was never in contact with uh, with the earth atmosphere or with the air it was only uh, enclosed in the volcano and uh, when it uh, it solidified it becomes basalt and then you have those kind of rock formations like you see on the picture on the right, like uh, columns of, uh, of, of, of like columns of vast rock uh, um, that we call uh, orgue in, in, in France uh, that you can find on different places on the planet that are very uh, extraordinary, uh, really special. Uh, well, uh, that's uh, how basalt will crystallize. So like uh, like when uh, salt uh, crystallizes or water crystallizes, it makes snowflakes. It makes a kind of ge 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 geometry. Well, when basalt uh, crystallizes, it creates also a kind of ge ge geometry, like you see on the white. And um, when the magma comes out of the volcano then we call we call it a lava and when lava uh, so lava it's uh, it's in reality magma that comes in contact with the air and then it uh, changes of uh, of structure of of composition also uh, there will be chemical reactions between the content of the magma and the air and and then we call it a lava and uh, and lava can also have interesting paramagnetic uh, effects uh, or, or paramagnetic values, but it's another rock, it's different, um, but that also can be interesting in agriculture. But we need to, uh, uh, to understand that it's two different rocks. Uh, basalt, Almost all basalts are paramagnetic, uh, but some are a lot more than others. But uh, lavas, they, uh, but with lava, it's not the same. They are not all paramagnetic. Some are, and some are not. Uh, so, and the ashes that comes from the volcano also, some are paramagnetic and some are not. Uh, um, so now we will. So I will explain uh, exactly what is paramagnetism uh, in a few uh, uh, later slides. 
So here we see again some uh, of those rock formations on top white, for example. Um, uh, like we we all know the the uh, the, the 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 best uh, um, uh, fertility or highest uh, fertility on of uh, of uh, fields are mostly around volcanoes, and so that's so widespread and known. Uh, like for example, in countries like Indonesia or in the middle of of uh, in in central america where you have also a lot of volcanoes well when you have the water uh the temperature uh good temperatures and uh, volcanoes then you have extraordinary fertility where you you really even don't need really fertilizers uh, uh, all plants grow very well uh, in abundance and uh, so it's uh, uh, it, uh, the nature shows us um, uh, how it works uh, uh, in front of us. Uh, so even if they grow since thousands of years, uh, they do agriculture on the volcanoes. It stays always very uh, fertile uh, in most cases. Uh. Um, yes, that's to show. Um, uh, from where comes um, uh, how the the planet is is made of different layers and the magma that is coming from deep in the earth um, it can be sometimes kilometers deep um, now there are a lot of theories and hypotheses about this so I don't want to go more in detail to that but um, what is interesting in my eyes is that it comes from deep in the earth and so it's really like earth energy that comes to the surface uh, so it's it's really like a connection between earth and cosmic energy if, if we look at it at an energetic uh, perspective and that's uh, what i find very uh, important and interesting too uh, here you see different uh, forms of basalt. Huh? You have a, a sand form, uh, like on top, and you have uh, uh, in powder. Uh, that's an example from basalt from Germany. They call it Urgestein's meal. It's like um, a powder from really um, the most old rocks of planet Earth, uh, like really the original rock of planet Earth. A, a lot of rocks of, on planet Earth are really um, an evolution of the erosion of basalt. Uh, uh, it's like uh, the, the real original rock comes from volcanoes. It's like the lava and the magma that solidifies. And then uh, with time, it will, um, it will transform in other rocks. Uh, with the erosion and compression and uh, it's a uh, it's it's a uh, theology it's really the the original rock energies and uh, and and composition of planet earth also uh, uh, that, that's why they they name it like this uh, um uh here you see the composition on, on that uh, package and you see that uh, there is 44% uh, of silicium oxide, 12% of uh, kind of uh, alum aluminium oxide, but a natural oxide like you find in the soil. Uh, here you see also 11% calcium oxide and 11% and iron oxides and magnesium oxides also some at 13 percent is very high and also some potassium and phosphor um, but in reality the chemical composition is not so important uh, we i will explain you why it's uh, for example they did some experiments where they put uh, basalt in little plastic bags for example and then they digged it in the earth and they planted a plant above it and the plants grow better even if the roots don't touch the basalt even if their roots uh, cannot uh, absorb the 
the the micro elements of the basalt it's really the energy radiated by the basalt that will help the plants to grow so it it puts our knowledge about soil fertility and uh, soil nutrition completely upside down because here we have uh, something that will increase fertility by its radiation, by its energy that it radiates around. So it's completely different than uh, absorbing nu nutrients. Uh, uh, it it's, it's works uh, different. Maybe it will help the plant absorbing uh, nutrients. It's like it gives energy uh, that makes uh, for the plant maybe more possible uh, to absorb uh, better nutrients. Uh? Uh, it's like an example, if you are very tired, and uh, but you are hungry, but you are so tired that you don't have the force to eat, then you go to sleep. <laughs> well, basalt will give you the energy to give you the force to eat again and to and to uh, take your, your 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 nutrients. Well, in the soil, it's it's maybe something like this. You you can have a lot of uh, nutrients, but if the plant don't have the energy or the microorganism don't have the energy, well, uh, then all those nutrients are like useless. It's, it's just there, but it's useless. It's like if you have a big library, but you are too tired to read the books, the books are useless. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, uh, or if, if you don't have the energy to, to, uh, to, uh, to think, well, then uh, it's, it's like useless to read a book if, if you don't really uh, think about it and if you cannot meditate the content about it. Uh, so uh, we, we need a kind of energy that is, uh, it's not just a material. Huh? Well, in the soil, it's a little bit like this too. Uh, the iron oxides can also be ferromagnetic. Uh, so in the content of basalt, we see sometimes a lot of iron oxides. Well, they are part of the iron oxides that are paramagnetic and the part are ferromagnetic. And um, uh, the problem uh, when we measure paramagnetism is that the most masses cannot uh, distinguish uh, paramagnetism from uh, from ferromagnetism uh, or, or otherwise you need very expensive uh, uh, devices but uh, I I have um, uh, I um, um, I conceived a way with also uh, uh, cheap devices to measure and to distinguish the, the paramagnetism. Uh, uh, it's quite easy. Uh, we, we just need to, to compare with um, rocks uh, with uh, only ferromagnetic material and then uh, we can and with, uh, with this, uh, it's, it's, it's quite easy in, 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 in a chemical point of view how to do that. Um, uh, but um, uh, it's it just by comparing samples where we know exactly the ferromagnetism because of the composition of iron, uh, then we can compare with other samples uh, with um, uh, um, an example. An example I will explain you. I will explain you when we will look at the measurement device about this. Hmm. It will be more easy to understand. Uh, here you see a table with uh, the paramagnetic values of minerals and elements. Well, uh, a, a product that is very paramagnetic is oxygen. So everybody knows about the importance of uh, oxygen in soil fertility. Well, uh, oxygen is also very paramagnetic. It's, it's a natural uh, paramagnetic product. So it, it uh, confirms too that uh, the more we have oxygen in our soil, um, uh, it will increase uh, the, uh, mostly the good microorganisms and uh, it's very important for fertility. Uh, you have basalt that are like between 100 and 15,000 micro CGS. 
So micro CGS is the, the, the value or the name given to, uh, to, uh, to, um, to the measurements of paramagnetism. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's defined by micro C from centimeters, uh, G from grams, and S from seconds. It's uh, micro centimeters, grams, seconds. It um, is the speed that the particles will move in a static magnetic field uh, to a pole of a magnet, for example. Well, uh, the, the faster it will move to the pole, it will be attracted, while well, the higher is the paramagnetic value. Uh, but here it's really in micro, um, uh, um, yes, it, it's not, uh, um, uh, it's, it's in micro, it's not milli uh, CGS, it's micro CGS. It's really a very uh, subtle energy. Uh? It's not that the particle will move uh, like a centimeter a second. No, it will move only uh, micro centimeters. Huh? Uh, so you have the lavas. Lavas are between uh, zero and 5,000 micro CGS in most cases. Uh, the volcanic ashes, mostly also between zero and 5,000. Uh, it's approximative uh, values. Huh? But that will also explain why sometimes you have a very similar lava or very similar basalt, and one will uh, really increase soil fertility and the other not. Well, uh, that can be sometimes explained by the paramagnetic value. Uh, when you go to a garden center or to, uh, um, or to uh, uh, companies that sell fertilizers to farmers, uh, well, in most cases, they don't know about the paramagnetic value and they sell the basalt or lavas uh, uh, because of their chemical composition. Well, but uh, uh, like we've seen, uh, it's not the chemical composition that is really impo important uh, in, 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 uh, for the working of the basalt. It's more the energetic properties and and uh, and the paramagnetic value. Uh, so uh, then you can, uh, when you know the paramagnetic value, you can choose the the one that has uh, a more or higher paramagnetic value in com in, in in comparison with others, for example, to to increase the effects. Mm. Uh, most other products like aluminum, sodium, it's only 16, so it's close to zero uh, of paramagnetism, calcium too. Uh, this does not mean that, that sodium or calcium or potassium is not important for soil fertility, it just means that it has no paramagnetism or almost no, uh, so that, it's, that it works differently. Um, you have also water, copper, uh, like copper, for example, is on, only five in paramagnetic value. So it's, it's uh, also close to zero. Huh? So the, the most metals are like close to zero. Uh, so uh, just to, to know. Uh, um, so I ah, yes, the organic matter that is rich in carbon and carbon also, it's uh, also uh, zero in paramagnetism. But uh, living uh, matter will be a little bit richer in oxygen. So it will always be a little bit higher in paramagnetism than that organic matter. So that's also interesting. Um, so uh, the more we have living organic matter, the more it will also be paramagnetic and the more we will have oxygen uh, but it's it's slight difference huh? mm. so we continue um ah, yes iron for example is uh, ferromagnetic but when it oxidizes like uh, rust uh, well some uh, forms of iron oxides are paramagnetic huh? so uh, iron can can uh, 
or the oxides of iron can sometimes be very interesting also for soil fertility um, in a certain way. Uh. So here it's a schematic to explain what is paramagnetism, ferromagnetism, and uh, diamagnetism. Uh. So we will share that uh, a picture in the group in English. Uh, here it's still in French, but not. A, I will explain you. <laughs> um, so, uh, paramagnetism. I will first explain uh, uh, what we see uh, on the on the bottom. Diamagnetism. So, when you have a magnet, that's what you see on the on the left uh, column. Um, you have the particles that are that are showed on the right. Um, when it's diamagnetic and you put the particles close to a magnetic field or, or to a static magnetic field, uh, like from a magnet, well, the particles will be like repelled or it will um, or like uh, react uh, neutral, like uh, it, it will not react, uh, react to the magnetic field or it will be repelled. So away from the, the poles of a magnet, it will be repelled. So that's what we call diamagnetism. For example, of water, water is diamagnetic, for example. And then you have a ferromagnetism like iron. Well, then the particles will be attracted to uh, the poles, like iron is attracted to a magnet or the magnet attracted to the iron. Um, and uh, when, and what is special is that when iron touches a magnet or is in the magnetic field of a magnet and you take the magnet away, uh, then the iron will stay ma magnetic. It will act as a magnet. It will. It's like it becomes itself a magnet. So uh, when we have the iron particles in the magnetic field, it will become themselves magnets. Huh? So and with their own magnetic field. So it's like you would have two magnets that will attract each other. It's like uh, the iron will act as a magnet and will be attracted to the original magnet. Uh, it will gain a magnetic field similar to the original uh, magnetic field. And when you take away the source of the magnetic field, so the, the original magnet, uh, the iron particles will stay magnetic. Uh, so that's uh, interesting. And now uh, when we look at paramagnetism, it's a very, it's a close, uh, it's very close in effect to ferromagnetism, but a little bit different. So the, the paramagnetic particles will also be attracted by a magnet and will also become magnetic, become magnetic in, um, in the neighborhood of the magnetic field of a magnet. Huh? So it will also be attracted and will also act as a magnet. But when we will put away the source of the magnetic field, the, the original magnet, well, then the particles will become again neutral. They lose their magnetism at that moment. When, when you take away the source of the magnetic field, uh, the particles will be again neutral. They don't stay magnetic. They just uh, lose their energy uh, again. So uh, that's very interesting. It's uh, the, the paramagnetic particles will act as, a, as a iron. It will become magnetic uh, in, um, in the magnetic field. But as soon as you take the source away, it, it becomes again uh, neutral uh, with zero magnetism. That's very interesting. So when we will have now, if we look at planet Earth as a giant magnet, well, the, the particles of uh, the paramagnetic particles will act as a magnet because of the magnetic field of the Earth. 
because they they will be they will resonate they they will uh, uh, they will resonate with the magnetic field of the earth as as the source of the magnetism so if you don't have the magnetic field of the earth they lose their magnetism huh? uh, so it's very interesting it's really direct radio receiver in a certain way or direct receiver of the earth uh, magnetism huh? so very interesting so so you see that oxygen has also that uh, that property. Yeah? So it's uh, it's not just oxygen used in chemical uh, uh, reactions in our bodies or in the plants in the cells to oxidize uh, certain uh, sugars and create energy. No, it's also energy that is like uh, uh, coming from the magnetic field of the earth. Huh? It's not just oxygen. Huh? So that's very interesting to... Uh... So if we are like in nature with uh, higher oxygen values of the air, I suppose that we have also more magnetic energy in the air. It's like we bought in a magnetic energy field. Uh, for example, you have to know in cities like Mexico City, you have only 13 to 15 percent oxygen levels in the air because there's so much pollution and, uh, and, uh, and the air is also warm uh, uh, that you have less oxygen. But if you go in nature, in the woods, or in, in normal, the normal values are around 21%. So it's completely different, 21% of oxygen and 13-15% uh, and, uh, uh, of oxygen. Huh? It's like 5% uh, more or less. It's, it's a lot. Uh, uh, it's like uh, one third or one one quarter uh, less or more. It's, it's a wall. It's uh, a big difference. Huh? So it's like we we bought in a kind of uh, um, uh, paramagnetic field when we have more oxygen. It's more energy too. Here you see the devices of um, uh, the first one on the left is the original device uh, used by Phil Callahan. Uh, that was made by or or distributed by Pike AgriLabs in the U.S. Um, that uh, most people use to measure paramagnetism, but now they don't make it anymore, or not uh, that I know. And uh, so uh, I made also then one because there was no no device anymore on the market or not at a, at a, at a, at an interesting price you have devices uh, in laboratory um, uh, fields but that are really very very expensive uh, and this device that uh, callahan helps to uh, to to make um, is uh, it's really made for agriculture purpose. Uh, it's, it's quite easy. It's not so precise as a laboratory device, but it's enough precise for the use we, we need. Huh? And um, so uh, I made one again, but uh, for the moment, that's quite difficult for electronics uh, to find all the electronic parts. But um, I'm uh, making again, we are changing some electronic parts to to be able to make it, uh, but that's the problems of today's uh, world. Uh, but uh, um, but it's, it's quite interesting. So uh, we need just uh, 25 grams uh, samples for the Callahan device. Uh, for my device, uh, I need some more like 50 grams or, or between 15, 50 and 100 grams. Uh, because my uh, sample uh, need to be uh, bigger uh, for for my device, um, but the measurement is more precise. Uh, it's more strongly made and and it's more precise, more stable too. Uh, um, so I will show you more in detail. 
Uh, that's, uh, for example, basalt in front of my uh, house uh, that was delivered. Uh, on top, you see the electronics inside the device. You have like two coils. And one coil uh, is like a reference coil, and the other coil is where you will put the sample. And then you have an electronics that will uh, like uh, calculate the or, or measure the reaction of the sample in a certain magnetic field uh, or created by the coil. Uh, so, but that's electronics. Uh, so it's it's quite simple uh, how it's made on an on electronic uh, point of view, huh? but um, yes, I don't know why um, um, uh, there are no. Ah, it it it's not a subject that is very well known, so there are not much electronicians uh, working on that, uh, but. Uh, so that's why it's not really made uh, a lot, uh, but uh, we are working to make it more known. <laughs> um, so I will show you uh, an example. Oh, sorry, it's, yeah. So on the device, you have a table. And on the table, uh, maybe it's later in the presentation, but I, I will tell you already what's on the table. Or, or put in the group also. Uh, when the soil sample is between zero and hundred, then he considers it's a poor soil. And when it's between hundred and three hundred, then he, he he considers. So Phil Callahan considers it's a good soil. So with a natural uh, interesting fertility uh, value. So it, that will that means that when you will not use any fertilizers, you will already have um, good uh, yields. Huh? Uh, but with an, on a poor soil, if you don't use any fertilizers, you will really have a poor. Yield, huh? um, it's like the natural fertility uh, that you have in the soil, or energy or fertility. And when it's between um, between uh, uh, three hundred and seven hundred, then he really considers it to uh, to a superior uh, soil. And between seven hundred and thousand two hundred, uh, really uh, uh, a, a superior soil of a, a very superior soil. So in, th in that soil, you almost not need any fertilizers. It's like. It, it will inc increases a lot of fertility in the natural fertility of the earth, the life uh, in the in the soil that that you almost not need any fertilizers. Uh, that's what we can find uh, on certain hills or around uh, volcanoes uh, sometimes. And um, when you will you want to increase the paramagnetic value of your soil, then you can choose certain rocks with very high uh, paramagnetic values. And then he advised uh, to have values like between uh, 1,000 and 3,000 uh, micro CGS uh, uh, to have an interesting uh, rock or basalt uh, that can help uh, to increase uh, the paramagnetic value of your soil. Uh, there was a question about uh, bricks, if is brick uh, is paramagnetic. Uh, not really very much. Well, when you take clay, it's not very paramagnetic, very less, like between uh, zero and 50. But when you will bake it, when you bake it, when it becomes pottery, so like a brick, then it, uh, it can double of paramagnetism. It can be between 50 and 100, maybe. Well, it's, it's, uh, so it's a little bit more paramagnetic, but uh, in comparison with basalt, it's uh, it's uh, it's really not much paramagnetic. Huh? But it's if you don't have any basalt, it can be interesting. Huh? It can be interesting to ha to have uh, pieces of pottery uh, that that can increase uh, slightly the paramagnetic value, and like we saw. Um, 
it's it's not only about uh, the 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 highest uh, paramagnetic value that it's important to uh, if if you don't have any paramagnetic value and you will add some paramagnetic uh, uh, rocks or or bricks even if it's not very high it will already make a big difference uh, in your soil uh, 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 between having nothing at all and having a little bit of paramagnetism it can already make a huge difference i can tell you that by experience it's really it can make a huge difference so it's not only about having the highest paramagnetic value uh, it's um it's not always so important uh, sometimes you have uh, rocks basalt rocks that are like around 1500 micro cgs that have also um, as much effects on plant growth than uh, rocks of 5000 or 9000 uh, so there are still mysteries we 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 don't explain everything we don't have uh, the the answers to all what we observe but uh, it's something we observe an example too uh the sizes of the particles uh, and the form of the particles can also have uh, an influence on the paramagnetic value and the paramagnetic effects uh, it's like it works as an antenna and uh, you, you can have the same rock, but if uh, the one in powder uh, will maybe have a lot more effect than the one in sand or in gravel. Uh, an example, when you have a, a same rock in gravel, uh, the, the surface uh, of, of all the gravel of the stone uh, is a lot less than uh, powder and maybe the surface that is in contact with your earth will also uh, increase a lot the effects on the plant growth it's like you have more surface in contact with the microorganisms with uh, with uh, it's like you have less electricity but you have more plugs you can uh, plug <laughs> more easily everywhere so uh, when you have a bigger surface, it's like uh, you will spread the paramagnetism uh, a lot more in your whole soil than if you have just a gravel. Huh? And each particle will radiate that paramagnetic energy. If you have just one rock, it's maybe like you have a one particle, but it's a big particle. Maybe it will radiate higher uh, paramagnetic uh, value locally but um, uh, maybe it has less effect than a lot uh, little eh? maybe i uh, just a hypothesis but uh, i think there is something uh, to it so here you see a, 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 um, a schematic or a drawing uh, to explain all the benefits you can have from from basalt uh, so uh, I, I draw uh, all little magnets in the soil. It's like you have all kind of little radio receivers in the soil that will um, that will uh, receive and transmit the radio signals, the radio signals of of the earth magnetism uh, twenty four hours a day in your soil. Huh? It will also be uh, uh, so. Well, what we see is that the microorganism really like that very much. It, it it increases their energy and their 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 um, their their proliferation and their development. And also the earthworms, they really increases. Uh, uh, they they are bigger. They grow a lot. Uh, they have more that's something you can see quite quickly in your garden when you begin to use uh, basalt and um, the soil uh, will have a lot better structure very quickly you don't need to wait years and years as soon as you will put some basalt you will see uh, a few months after already that uh, the rock 
uh, the the soil uh, has a lot better structure uh, like it stimulates a lot of the microorganism it will also stimulate the the your soil will have um, the it will also stimulate or improve the the soil structure that will also be able to to uh, receive more moisture water uh, uh, will have a better drainage like in very clay soils uh, where where you can have a problem with drainage uh, well it it will uh, help because like it stimulates a lot of life in the soil the drainage capacity will a lot be better and in in sandy soils it will increase the moisture capacity so you will have a lot better uh, a lot more moisture you will still have the good effect of drainage of the sand but you will also have, the sand will stay a lot longer uh, humid uh, after a rain uh, so it's very interesting so it's interesting in almost all soils uh, basalt uh, for, for for that effect um yeah so, um yeah i'll continue uh, so it stimulates life in the soil, increases soil microorganism, earthworm activity, increases vitality of the plants, increases the earth magnetic field, yes, increases frost resistance and disease resistance. Yes, it's a kind of s a side effect huh? when the plants have more energy. Uh, when you have more energy, more life in the soil you see that uh, like for example the snow will melt a lot quicker in springtime uh think because the soil when you have more life it increases the warmth of the soil the, the warmth in the soil don't, don't come only from from the sun and the temperature outside it's also from the life in the inside the soil uh, uh, that can make a huge difference uh, so it uh, holds water longer. It attracts even water. When when I have um, uh, like a, um, um, uh, when I have a truckload of of sand of basalt sand uh, that is uh, delivered. And it's very dry when they deliver it. Well, in a few days already, it become a moisture inside. It's uh, very quick. It's like it attract the the water from below, and it will it really attract it like a sponge. But it's not a sponge. Huh? Uh, it's because of the, the the paramagnetic effects or the energetic effect that there is really something going that it really attract the water. It's uh, over and over uh, all again. So it's a natural earth radio receptor and brings also a lot of minerals. In basalt, you have a lot of different minerals. And uh, you can also have that approach that uh, every mineral corresponds with certain frequencies and, and certain energies. And so you will bring all those frequencies also uh, to the soil, like uh, the frequencies from silicium uh, as an antenna, as, 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 as a quartz crystal, for example, and also from all other uh, minerals that you can find in basalt. How to spread uh, in the fields? Well, you have two ways. Uh, you can spread it directly with a distributor, like a, a machine like you see on the bottom. Uh, but uh, be careful because basalt is a very hard rock and then it wear off uh, very quickly all iron pieces of the machine. Huh? It's, uh, it's really, uh, it, it, uh, in, in, the, in farming, you need to be aware of that that it's very hard rock that will really wear off uh, the the iron uh, very quickly yeah? so uh, uh, so not all machines will be adapted to uh, spread basalt and um, and then you can also mix it with compost huh? uh, that's a very uh, a very uh, a good way to do it 
because the basalt will also stimulate the microorganism of the compost and uh, it's a it's a very complementary uh, product uh, to mix with the compost and uh, before spreading in the fields uh, or also with the manure when when you have a barn and manure and uh, it smells bad you put a little bit of basalt powder and it stimulates a lot the good microorganism and it take away the smell so that's something you 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 can observe very quickly uh, very interesting that's a very interesting because you will improve the microorganism without bringing microorganism it's like you change the energy that makes that you will have the good microorganism that will develop and not the bad ones that makes the bad smell <laughs> so that's very interesting uh how much uh do i advise for for farming or in 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 um, in our gardens uh, to spread well in farming mostly we use 100 grams a square meter but you can also go up to uh, one kilo a square meter but then it will be uh, more a bigger investment huh? but uh, uh I would advise minimum 100 grams a square meter to to begin to see to observe um, uh, good uh, effects on your soil fertility, and uh, and if you you can you can also uh, or you can every year put some more, or or you can also invest more and put directly one kilo a square meter. I know even a farmer that put like 10 kilo a square meter and he had uh, very good results with it, but uh, that's a huge investment, 10 kilo a square meter. But like I, I told before, if uh, you never have put basalt on your soil before and you put some even only 100 grams a square meter, it can already make a huge difference because uh, in comparison with no paramagnetism and having some paramagnetism in your soil, it can make a huge difference in soil fertility. And uh, for our gardens, the same. Uh, uh, I, I, uh, so in my garden, I put like a one kilo a square meter. Uh, uh, you, you can even put more. Now, uh, too much at the same time it's maybe not also good because uh, for other reasons is that it's better to to give uh, like uh, one kilo every year for example or 100 grams every year than uh, like uh, 10 kilo uh, in once because 10 kilo in once is really a lot and uh, and basalt is mostly very alkaline and um, and so uh, it will uh, it will uh, temporarily uh, maybe uh, um, uh, influence uh, too too quickly the the acidity of the soil, huh? and that's not always good too. Huh? So you in 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 agricultural point of view uh, for soil fertility, you also need to be uh, careful about that. Huh? So it's it's better to put a little bit regularly than too much at once uh, yeah so we continue so here for example uh, some devices you can some machines you can use to spread the basalt but like i told you that uh, that disc that you see on the bottom of the of the the basalt um, uh, recipient uh, that works really very quickly uh, with basalt. That's re really very hot uh, rock that uh, wears off the iron very quickly. How to use in your garden around your trees, for example? Well, uh, we observed that uh, we have even a lot better results when we put the basalt like in, in a circular form around the tree. And that's a, a dowser that uh, that they, that showed me that uh, a few uh, years ago, and uh, I had a, a, a linda tree 
uh, Linde or um, in English, I don't know, but exactly, but uh, the, it was a tree in front of my house that had a certain sickness. Ah, yes, a linden, yes, a linden tree. And I've put basalt all around and uh, his, uh, his situation become better. He had less sickness, but he was still a little bit sick. And then I put a basalt in that way, in a circular form. And from that year on, I don't have any disease anymore on that uh, tree. So it was really very powerful. And that makes me think about the technique of the atmospheric antenna that we saw in the last and the other presentation. You have an atmospheric antenna with like a grid around or a, a fence around. Well, it creates like an electrical field in between the 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 central antenna and the um, and the uh, and, and the fence around uh, uh, or or the, or the or the grid around uh, the, the 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 metal grid around and well i think there is something happening like this that the tree is like the atmospheric antenna itself and then by putting the basalt around, it's like it creates like a, a, a ring effect or, or creates, it will increase uh, the energy of the tree. Uh, that, that's what we see with energetic uh, testing or dousing that the, the energy field of the tree really increases a lot. And uh, now I, I've done this also uh, for the first time a few weeks ago around the round tower. And it seems also to work uh, very well, uh, but we will see about the round towers uh, later. But uh, you can uh, do this also uh, around round towers to increase the effect of the round tower. So that's also very interesting. Um, so. That's what we observe. We, we don't always really understand why, but uh, we see the effects and that's uh, most important to uh... Results. Here you see in my garden, mint that was uh, more than one meter 70 high. And normally in the books, it's a mint that has, that becomes normally maximum 80 centimeters high. So he, uh, so it's very, very high. Um, um, uh, so you use all, you can also use, uh, so I use the basalt that I spread all over my garden and also um, uh, around the plants I like uh, to, to improve uh, locally the soil fertility. And you can also use basalt uh, to make uh, the round towers. Uh, the round tower will act like the like the the big uh, magnetic antenna, and the basalt in your soil is like the the little phones in the soil. <laughs> uh, it's like uh, we have uh, all little phones, but we need a big antenna close to receive the signals. So, well. The round tower is very complementary uh, effect, have, have a, a really a complementary effect with uh, the basalt in the soil. Uh, you can use the two separately, but the two together will really increase a lot uh, the effects too. Another example, uh, here you see the, the dramatic or really the huge effects you can have sometimes. It will not always be like this, but uh, I saw this, uh, this is a uh, real pictures. <laughs> uh, I was also amazed uh, when I saw this experiment. Uh, it was um, uh, to my neighbor in the past. Uh, so it was a neighbor in his garden. He put a lot of uh, manure organic manure from uh, from from a close farm and he didn't understand that his uh, his vegetables didn't grow well because his soil was quite good and uh, he put every year a lot of manure and he didn't understand that it didn't grow so that's also interesting because it's not only about 
putting organic material in your soil that will make that uh, it will increase fertility. It's also about energy. And then uh, I had some basalt under my pyramid in my garden, and I gave him uh, a bag of basalt. And I told him, ah, try this out in your garden. And, and he put uh, one kilo a square meter. Uh, he, he seeded four rows of beans that you see on the bottom left. And the two rows on the right were with basalt, the two rows on the left without. Uh, and for the carrots, the same. The two rows on the left with and the two rows on the right without. You, you see a huge difference in germination and also in the growth. So um, now here, it's not only the effect of the basalt, it's also the effect that the basalt was used as a receiver or as a battery of the pyramid energy. It's like basalt has a really great capacity to receive and to uh, build up a pyramid energy when you put it in the pyramid. An example also in, in real life, in the big pyramid of Egypt, you have uh, big granite rocks above the king's chamber that are very paramagnetic, for example. That's also research from uh, Phil Callahan that uh, measured uh, those uh, rocks. And uh, I had also uh, one time someone that went to Egypt and that sent me some pieces of the rocks used uh, uh, for building the pyramid uh, above the king chamber. And, uh, and I measured, I confirm uh, it was also a high paramagnetic value. Uh, so it's interesting. Huh? Um, so you see a huge uh, difference in uh, in the growth. Huh? If, if you have that in your wall field, you imagine that it can make a huge difference, huh? a, a big, big difference. And you see that it's not only about, uh, I repeat again, huh, but it's really not about uh, just having nutrients in the soil because he had a lot of nutrients in the soil he had uh, so much uh, manure of of the cows of a neighboring farm and, and and a lot of organic material in the soil so uh, he he had not a lack of nutrients uh, uh, but uh, when when we put the basalt uh, and and energized under the pyramid he saw a huge difference so here it's how some farmers do in France, uh, or some of my customers, uh, they, they, they make huge pyramids like this to energize their basalts. So that's a, a, a pyramid of five meter uh, square. So it's quite big. Um, and this works very well like this. Hmm. And then they put like, uh, the basalt, I would advise minimum two days under a pyramid uh, to increase the effect. You have also other ways where you can increase the energy of the basalt. Um, uh, but I will, yes, I will explain this uh, maybe in the group uh, because it's not in this presentation. Another example I did, it was growing uh, beans in pure basalt uh, gravel. So no soil, no uh, uh, nothing else than only basalt rocks. So it, it was to show that that fertility, it's not only about nutrients and, uh, and a good soil, it's about energy. That's why I did that experiment. So I took uh, pots like this, uh, terracotta pots, and I put uh, the basalt and then in the middle, I, I put a pot uh, to put the water inside uh, that it will uh, uh, water naturally the basalt around that will become moist, uh, humid. And then I see that the beans and you see them uh, growing uh, like it was a real soil. So you see here, they are really growing uh, uh, quite normal. Uh, 
they have maybe a little lack of certain nutrients uh, because they are not very green green but it's already uh, quite a miracle that's not a miracle but it shows that uh, soil fertility it's not only about nutrients you see that uh, you can even grow in uh, in stones and water uh, if you have water and stones and the white right energy uh, you can grow anything you want <laughs> Uh, it's it's uh, and and growing it's also growing the microorganisms uh, it's uh, around the roots uh, in the you 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 create soil in reality it's not that you need soil you you need to create the conditions that create life in the soil uh, yeah you you need to create the right energy conditions that will create life in the soil and then life will only improve itself and you will increase the yields above the soil and under the soil uh, uh, in microorganism you will really build the soil in a certain way yeah. what you can do also very uh, very um, um, uh, simple effective and cheap way to energize the water irrigation water or spray water it's just to put a basalt a paramagnetic basalt stones in a tube uh, or in your hose and uh, or in your and um, your um, in your water tank and then uh, you make uh, flow the water through the basalt stones it's like uh, your water flows through a river uh, on a volcano uh, it's it will be really uh, uh, energizing and uh, and then you water your plants uh, with that water i can assure you that this works really fantastic uh, i saw uh, i i can show you some images uh, of of really good results uh, and that's a very cheap and natural way of energizing your water. It's like you will magnetize your water, but in a real with the earth magnetism, huh? really with a natural way. Also, when the water will flow around those rocks, it's like uh, it will create a lot of little vortexes, uh, vortex. And this also uh, has some electrical properties that will also energize your water so you will have two effects uh two uh uh yes two uh, functions uh it will create a lot of vortexes in the water and it will also magnetize the water so it's very powerful and very cheap uh with with certain simple devices like this you can have uh, sometimes as much effects as very expensive devices that works with electromagnetics and i tell you this by experience because 15 years ago i i, I uh, made and and sold a lot of uh, electromagnetic water treatment devices in in, uh, in irrigation in uh, agriculture and now today i um, i advise this huh? <laughs> so it's uh, so it's more simple more easy ah here an example that was a guy a farmer in mexico and uh, he uh, put uh, uh, a volcanic rocks in the tube uh, like uh, like he he, he saw uh, a presentation of me where i talked about this uh, and that is on youtube and then he he tested this and he had huge results you see the mint before or in the the control group on the left and on the right uh, big leaves uh, the, his mint became a uh, huge and he did uh, he did this also in his uh, citrus orchard of oranges uh, uh, lemons and he had also huge results on his citrus he told me uh, so very very interesting so just a simple way of energizing or bring energy natural uh, energy uh, to the plants and to the soil and the water through through the water the the water is like also a receiver uh, it's like also a battery or an antenna a receiver of uh, 
of kind of electromagnetic energy that can be radiated by uh, the basalt. And basalt is also used to make uh, the round towers. That's uh, uh, most used material to make the round towers that will be the subject of the next uh, presentation. Huh? So, but I show you already a little bit if you want to begin, uh, I advise you to do it uh, for sure as quick as possible <laughs> in your garden. Well, you can uh, take a terracotta a tube, or if you don't have, you can also take maybe a plastic or concrete tube. But I, I will, I advise prefer uh, I prefer terra terracotta or ceramic uh, tube, and then you just have to fill it uh, with basalt, and you can put a rock on the top like you see on the image on the right or you can put a, a cone like you see uh, like uh, it's a similar cone a size or angle as the cones you see on the towers in ireland and uh, uh, but you can have already very good effects with just a rock on top or, but then a paramagnetic rock like a certain granite or a granite or also a certain basalt. Huh? If you have a rock of basalt or lava or granite, you can use this. And uh, or you can also mix the basalt with the concrete. For example, if you build a house or a barn and you have to make a concrete uh, floor or basement, well, uh, you can use a, a sand from basalt in place of, of any other sand. And so you will also bring paramagnetic energy inside your house it's like you will live on a volcano in a certain way on on, on an energetic point of view so it's very uh, can be very interesting also or you can make like uh, a box of concrete made of basalt uh, then uh, it will and you can put your seeds inside that box and that will also energize uh, a lot or even your food or vegetables to uh, to to preserve it in the winter time for example well uh, you you can uh, uh, you you can you can use basalt to uh, for a lot of ideas uh, it will help to increase uh, uh, like uh, the life energy uh, around of all living organisms so it will also help to preserve the food huh? um, if you make a box out of it for example to put your food inside or a plate to put your food on it uh, will uh, probably also help a lot uh, ah that's my my book that i share uh, that was my first front page but now it's like this <laughs> Uh, it's a little bit different, but the same content uh, that you will find soon on my site in English. Um, so I advise naturally the books of Phil the books that I discovered, uh, all that knowledge and then my own experiences, like you will do too in your gardens. Um, in France, we are like two two people that really talk a lot about basalt. It's me and another guy called Eric Petiot, uh, from who I learned also a lot. And in Canada, you have uh, Alan Reed that is also a passionate about basalt uh, and uh, all kinds of rocks <laughs> and their effects. Um, so uh, I think we are still in the beginning of of the of really the discovery of of the whole picture about basalt and and those rocks. Uh, this is what I showed you is really a beginning, but we see already that with with that beginning we can have already huge uh, effects. I will tell you something more about basalt that is in my book. Uh, it's about uh, the biophotons. Well, um, <clears throat> ah, yes, so sure. I just opened it on the white page. <laughs> um, so, uh, 
Phil Callahan, he went uh, uh, to a, a guy named Fritz Pop, that is a researcher about biophotons. And biophotons is uh, really uh, photons uh, like uh, from light, uh, uh, light photons that are emitted by all living organisms. That's why we call it a biophoton. Uh, and um, and Fritz Pop, he used a very specific and sensitive uh, measurement devices to be able to measure very weak biophoton radiation. And he measured like this uh, food, uh, food sample microorganisms uh, in, in like in a black room, in a black box where you don't have any light. And then he has some uh, photo multipliers of, of, of photon uh, measurement devices uh, or sensors inside that measures the little lights coming from the living organism. Well, and, and Phil Callahan, he wanted to know if basalt uh, emits biophotons or light, if it emits light. And then he went to Fritz Pop and uh, Fritz Pop told him, oh, uh, I never saw a rock emitting light. Uh, it's only about uh, living organisms. It's not about uh, rocks. And then uh, Phil Callahan really insist uh, to do the measurement. And then he was uh, uh, amazed to see that basalt emits uh, also biophotons. And then he did a, an experiment. Uh, so that's very interesting because that only fact that basalt emits biophotons, it's so it means that when you will put basalt in your soil, you will bring a light in your soil. It's really you bring uh, literally light in your soil, huh? so a light energy in your soil. Well, um, uh, he measured Fritz Pop measured that that uh, uh, basalt. Uh, that was high with a high paramagnetic value emits like 2,000 to 4,000 biophotons a second. And when um, uh, ah, yes, please, uh, yes, I uh, no, it was the the the, the compost. Yes. Uh, yes, it emits 2,000 to 4,000 biophotons a second. And when he mixed it with compost, it increased to 400,000 biophotons a second. So it was 400 to 800 times more. And so that's why also I, I, I tell that uh, it's very complementary. It's very interesting to mix basalt with the compost because it will it will really increases also the 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 biophoton radiation of the microorganism and not only of the basalt. It's you will have the basalt that will emit uh, two thousand. Uh, it will uh, really uh, boost uh, the microorganism in the compost and the, the whole mixture will then uh, produce like 400 to 800 times more biophotons. It's like when you will put this in your soil, it's like, uh, yes, it will, it will really uh, uh, increase a lot uh, the life energy. Yeah? And um, what what also uh, is interesting is that the roots of of a plant are like quite similar in a certain way to our hair and it's like fiber optics our hair it's known that it works also like fiber optics that the light can go through our hair through our brain maybe or our head it's really like a fiber optic well uh, the roots Probably they also uh, capture, uh, just a hypothesis, but we, we could see that as the hair of the plant in a certain way. Uh, it's like the plant is upside down uh, with, uh, with the feet above and the, <laughs> the head in the soil. <laughs> but uh, 
Uh, the, 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 the roots will really uh, probably be nourished also like by the biophotons, by the light or the energy radiated from the soil. Uh, the, the roots are like the branches, they are like uh, radio antennas too. Uh, 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 that's, uh, that's also very interesting, as above, as below, and as below, as above. Uh, it's it's really very very similar as very interesting, and the roots are mainly white. Very interesting also that uh, the the color of the roots are white. Why why is it white? Uh, like uh, to to absorb a white light? Uh, maybe uh, uh, very interesting. So I think we are really in the beginning of of. Uh, of uh, 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 of the understanding of basalt. So I, I will tell you something more about uh, from my book. They they did a, a test on um, the the bacteria that that fix nitrogen uh, on the roots of plants. Uh, this was here a plant. I will tell you. Uh, uh what i don't remember exactly ah seglo it's a kind of uh, wheat plant a kind of grain uh, uh that makes naturally um uh, a symbiosis with uh, nodules of bacteria that fix uh, nitrogen from the air well when they put basalt they uh, be before before the basalt, they had like 10 to 15 um, uh, nodules around the root uh, to fix nitrogen. And after they have put basalt uh, in the soil, they have like around 200 nodules of those bacteria. So it's like you really bring nitrogen in your soil too. Huh? It's a... Uh, uh, you 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 could think oh, I need to put uh, plants that uh, that fix um, those uh, microorganisms that fix uh, 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 nitrogen uh, and uh, I will increase fertility. Yes, but if you if you bring basalt with it, you will uh, you will increase ten to fifty nodules will become two hundred nodules around the, the those the roots of those plants uh, so it's it really it's like you will stimulate you you stimulate the light in the soil but you are uh, the the biophotons but also the 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 capacity of the soil of fixing nitrogen from the air uh, so and there's just basalt it's just a rock uh, it's like uh, uh you, you you could not think it's a, it's it's a, such a miracle rock. Huh? It's a, it's a really uh, um, in, in, it's really very interesting uh, and, and very impressive all the effects you can have from basalt. And when you look at uh, magnetite, for example, uh, magnetite can be a, a, a kind of form of basalt or a form of rock, uh, very rich in iron oxides. Well, when you look under the micro under under the microscope, certain magnetites, uh, well, it has a form of pyramids or tetrahedras. Uh, it's really uh, a, a crystal form very close to the pyramids. Uh, that's also very interesting. Like everything is linked together or connected, and that's also uh, the topic of a next uh, presentation about the effects of pyramids. So you see that we have like bridges of knowledge between the, the like we see the, the atmospheric antennas, the round towers, the basalt, the pyramids, it's all linked together in a certain way. Yeah? When you understand one topic, you understand a little bit better the other topic. And that's, that's uh, very interesting. And, and we are still discovering a lot of uh, bridges between all those uh, techniques and uh, and this this is a very uh, interesting uh, also to to exchange about all this uh, uh, and debate and, and exchange our knowledge 
because uh, that will bring also new ideas of combinations and of uh, of understanding of uh, of those techniques. So thank you very much. I'm at the end <laughs> uh, of this presentation, and I hope it was uh, interesting for you and uh, that it will help you to to um, to grow healthy fruit and vegetables and uh, and uh, crops in your garden and fields <laughs> thank you